Welcome to Sri Shivam and our show is Spiritual Explorations. Today I have a very special lady with me. Her name is Lucy Perillo Buttermoff and she has written a book called My Angel Without Wings. The book is about her son who is a special child and who uh, and all these challenges and trials and tribulations that, that were experienced by the family while this young man was growing up. And I want to welcome you, Lucy, to Thank the show. Thank you very Thank much, Christine. Christine. I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Is it the nice lady? Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyway, though, so I read your book, and it's a beautiful book. It really is. And uh, it's very, very well written, let me tell you. It is, it's so interesting, and it's really, I enjoy it Thank immensely. You. I really Thank you. Did. Uh, I want to ask you, though, uh, what, what um, caused you to write the book in the first place? Well, what caused me to write the book is, uh, is that I wanted to help parents who have children that are developmentally disabled and with autism. Uh, this book is very inspiring to any parent who has a child like this. And the main thing to get across is to never, ever, ever, ever give up on your child. And uh, you'll see that throughout the book. There were many, many challenges with that book. But I'd like to talk about the cover first. The cover of the book, yes. No, no not the cover of the book. Oh, the, the cover of the magazine. magazine. All right, I'm going to hold up the cover. I'm going to hold up the magazine. and Let's show the magazine. Okay, okay. this is, uh, this, I want to tell you how this magazine came about. Um, Anya Mark has a new director, and his name is John Bellotti. And he had come to one of my book signings, and... Uh, and uh, he said to me, uh, I, I heard about your book and I would like to read the book. So I said, fine. So he he, I sold him a book and he, uh, he went on his merry way. And two weeks later, he call, his, his secretary called me up and she said, um, Lucy Buttermock? I said, yes. She says, well, Mr. Bellotti would like to talk to you. So I said, okay. So he said, he got on the phone, he said, Lucy, I have to tell you, I was at the beach this weekend with my wife and uh, we, and my children, and uh, my wife happened to take the book along and all of a sudden she's reading the book and she's laughing, she's crying, and she's say, and, and she, before you know it, she read the book and she said, John, you have, you have to read, to read this, this book. book. You, you have, have to do something, something with this book. book. So, so he says, let's, let's put that aside, aside, he said. I read the book, and the book, book is fabulous. He said, but let's put that aside. Anya Mark is doing a new magazine, and, and the children are doing it, and it's called Inclusion, uh, Inclusion Time. And this would be the second edition of the magazine, and I would like to have them interview you and uh, your, your son and you will be in the magazine. I said, fine. Well, this young man came over who was a wonderful man and this young girl who was special and they interviewed me and this is how the book, uh, this is how the magazine came to be. And there's over 2,000 magazines on Staten Island mm -hmm. and it tells uh, the story, the, 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 how uh, a, few a few bits, bits and pieces of how I started the book. Yeah. But, but we'll talk about my book now. What would you like to know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, first of all, as I said, I enjoyed it. There was a lot of stories, and, and let's, let's go into the challenges that you endured when Johnny Boy was a little boy. Okay. The, I, of course, when I had John, I thought, you know, at, and, and my family thought that he was healthy, fine young little baby. And uh, as, the, as the time went by, at the age of two, he started to be very hyper. Uh, like I said, uh, he went to bed in his crib at two years old like a lamb, and he woke up like a tiger. Yes. And uh, from that day on, when he was two, he, I could not contain him. I had, I had to put, to put locks, locks on the door. 
his sleeping was all off then. He slept three hours a night, and that was my time to sleep. Yeah, that was all the sleep you got. Yes, and uh, of course my husband had to make a living and support us, so he'd be in his own bedroom. I would be sleeping on the floor in Johnny's room, and I'd lock the door. This way, if Johnny got out of the crib, he couldn't get out. Anyway, that went on for three years. And during the time that it did go on, I, uh, I say about two and a half years into it, I wanted to commit suicide. And uh, I really contemplated it. Well, that lack of sleep would have yes, yes, contributed yes. to that. So one night when he got up at three in the morning, I did get into the car and I drove and I I was going to drive right, right off the bridge. I went to the Verrazano Bridge, and I was like, what am I doing? Yeah, sure. It would have been a big, big thing. Sure. So when I came, I turned around, and I circled the island a bit, and then I came home, and I took Johnny. He fell asleep in the car, and I brought him in, put him in his crib, and I said, I can't believe that I was doing that. How stupid. Well, from that day on, I was a fierce mother protecting her cub. Sure, <laughs> why not, yeah. Um, I tolerated him and tried to teach him, but at that time, he, he, he didn't understand. He, if I'd call him, he wouldn't stop. I'd have to go and turn him around to have him look at me, and then he would, I'd hold his face like this to mine, and I'd say, you stop that, and he'd just look, and I knew. He didn't understand. I really knew that, and I brought him to the doctors, and I said, no, he's fine. Every doctor told me that. Well, it was time to put him in school, and one doctor, well, well they had him one day. Right. That's all they tolerated mm -hmm. him, and he was expelled right. from every single school on Staten Island. Kindergarten, starting with kindergarten. Yeah. So, and they didn't even give me home teaching. They, they usually, that's a law. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they told me to have him evaluated by a psychiatrist, which I did, and he told me to put him in Willowbrook. At the, the, the years ago, Willowbrook was a horror. I know. They were experimenting on children. Mm -mm. In fact, Johnny has a few friends that they did experiment on uh, with uh, eight, which uh, with uh, drugs that liver liver condition HIV. No, not HIV. Yeah, HIV. Well, that's that's the uh, the disease of uh, AIDS. It, it leads to. Yeah. No, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. It was. Uh, uh, I can't think of it. Whatever it was, they were experimenting. Yes, and they'd given that virus. Oh, so they, and they were, they yes, were and experimenting they, with viruses. Yes, ah. and these children would get it. And a lot of them that were uh, are, in, are in group homes, uh, they'd ha have that and then, then eventually die. Yes. Now, that was like a, a, a camp, a Nazi camp to me. Yeah, well, I imagine, right? sure. So anyway, um, that's what they told me to do. Well, I didn't do that. No, you know, it's hepatitis. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. They were experimenting with hepatitis. The hepatitis. Oh, boy. Yeah. So now the doctor told you to put him in Willowbrook, which naturally no. you didn't want to do. And it was, luckily, you didn't do it, it because it worked out for the best. It did. It did. I would, uh, I, I said, I told him, how dare you tell me to do that? Right. You playing God with my son's life? Yeah. How, how could you put your head on a pillow at night? Yeah. I said, and go to sleep. And how many parents have have listened God to you? God only knows how many ended up there I because said, of this doctor. I said, well, this parent isn't. And someday I'll be back. And I you said did that, go back. Yes, yes, I did. I did. Eventually you sat yes. down and you showed him the yes, results. Yes, I did. And uh, anyway, John, those years that... He was home with me. He was home with me from five years old to for ten years after that till fifteen. I try, I, I tried to teach him myself, and uh, I, it got a, a better. I would I would sit him at a table, in a chair, because naturally he wouldn't sit. 
So I would take my husband's belt and tie him and put it around his waist Get him to sit and still. he'd sit still and mm -hmm. I'd be across the table and I'd say, John, your name is John Buttermark. And you'd go, <laughs> your name is John Buttermark. Everything I said, he would repeat. I did this for one year. Consistent. I did it an hour a day for one year. I don't know how I did it. I never let a day go by. And he, he knew. He knew that that was his time to tell me his, you know, uh, my name was John Buttermark. And he finally repeated. he blurted it then out. Then he you must I have been said, really happy that oh day. my God, he said, I said, your name is John Buttermark. He said, my name is John Buttermark. And I could not believe it. Then he told me his address, his phone number, everything that I told him. So then you knew if he got off but he and, got lost. And not only that, I knew that he was, you could teach him. Yes. Uh, and that he did he have. He was able to comprehend. Yes, yes. And Johnny had many, many uh Accidents. He was very accident prone because. I know, you went through all his ages and what oh happened each year. Oh, God, <laughs> God. It, it's all in the book and it's a wonderful thing. And uh, it's a wonderful thing how it turned out to be. Now, um, I feel that the community people don't understand these children. No, because they, they don't fear, have to live with this situation. They fear seeing something different. Yeah. They see these children and they back away. Yeah. I went to many board meetings where we were going to put a group home in, in the neighborhood and the parents and the people in the neighborhood just didn't want it. And they would say, we don't want those crazy kids. We don't want these uh, mentally schizophrenic kids. But they're not like that. They're not like that at all. These children... If you just stop and say hello, you'd be surprised My, how, how, what a rewarding thing that is, how they look at you, even if they can't talk uh, or they, they have no speech. You'd be surprised what a rewarding thing that you do to, to go talk to them. They light up. Oh, sure, because they're getting attention. Yes, and, and they feel it. Oh, yeah. And, and people should not be afraid of these children because... No, they shouldn't. No, it's nothing to be afraid of. But Johnny has taught me many, many, many lessons in life. I have um, a husband that has been so wonderful as, as he's raising John. He always backed me up. But I want to go back to the school that um, I... I uh, co-founded. Uh, there was well, now you co-founded the out of necessity because out of necessity because there was nothing to help these types nothing of at all. So uh, I uh, went to. Uh, I said, I, "How this this can't be that I have the only child like this." So I didn't know anybody that had children like this. So one day I said, "You know what? I think." I could create a school, but in order to do that, I can't create it for one child. No. I need other parents with children. Right. So I went to the ritziest neighborhood in Staten Island, Toad Hill, and I knocked on a couple of doors. I did that for, I did that for like a month. I knock on ten doors a day. And a lot of times you got it slammed in I, your face. That's right. And and I said this is not going to work. Because I'd say, do you have a child like this? And I'd bring John with me. Uh -huh. And he would be pulling away from my hand. He'd want to run all over. So anyway, what happens is a uh, few years went by, and he started improving in speech. Because I would talk to him con constantly. Yeah. And he'd want to look at TV. But still, I'd, had, I'd have to belt him in the chair to look at TV. Because he got to be used to that, you know? Well, yeah, and there's nothing really wrong with that. No, no. And he knew that if he sat, he couldn't get out, and he'd have to sit. Well, yeah, yeah so he understood that. And that, that was, like, helpful to him. Sure. Because he really wanted to sit. Yeah. So he would learn from TV. He would learn from me. He would learn from 
my husband and and I have a son, Michael, who adores his brother, who has fought many a battles in his little life, uh, protecting his brother, would come home with black eyes because children would beat Johnny up outside. And, and, he, and he would- And he was seven years younger than yes, him. Yes, yes. I remember I used to tell Michael when I have to uh, cook a, a big dinner now, or I have a fam friends or family over, I tell him, Go outside with your brother and you watch him. Watch him good. And this child that I was telling to watch, his 14-year-old brother was seven. Right. I mean, when you think of that, that's like, oh my God, right? But Michael understood Johnny and Johnny understood his brother. And uh, they're, they're, they're the greatest pals today. Now, uh, I... As, as growing up, my attention was always to Johnny, Johnny, Johnny boy, Johnny boy, because he needed it. Yeah. And I had to put Michael aside. I couldn't give Michael my full attention. Well, Michael must be very special, too, because he understood. He certainly did. He understood. He understood that what I had to do for his brother, he understood everything because— He understood his brother was different. Yes. Uh, three years ago, uh, before I wrote this book, I did tell Michael, Michael, I have to talk to you, and I'm so sorry that when you were growing up and Johnny was growing up, my attention mainly was for your brother because he, his needs were more than your needs, and I'm so sorry I, I wasn't with you when you needed me. He said, wait, 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 that's not true. He said, Ma, you did the best you could. And let me tell you, Ma, with my brother Johnny, I learned compassion. I learned unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And I learned to laugh at things when things were so bad. Mm -hmm. Where would I get that education, Ma? Yes, sure, well, from your mother. <laughs> he said, so you, he was, a blessing, Ma, because that's how I raised my girls. And he's got three beautiful girls and, and a beautiful wife, and she, she, they're both wonderful parents, and they live behind me. But I like to talk about how Eden 2 started. We uh, started with the, these parents that I, I met at a meeting, at a regular meeting, because they called all the children together that were expelled when Johnny was expelled and they had a school for them. So that's how I met the other parents. And, and unfortunately, the school didn't work out for Johnny. And, uh, and the other parents weren't pleased either. So I called them over and we all discussed it. And we all discussed it, that, discussed it that Johnny and our children needed much more because it wasn't the right thing for them. So we said, how about creating a school? That was such a hard concept for us, you know? So we said, we could do this. I said, we could do this. And you did it. And we did. And we, w we seen a school in Jersey, Eden, and we loved it. We were willing to move to Eden, to Jersey, to get our children in Eden, but they were at a long list of people. So we got the, the director of Eden to show us how he started it. So we went to every politician going and we told them that it was, we needed a school for our children. It was their birthright. Sure. And uh, how dare you. Anybody be, deny them. Deny them of their the birthright. The opportunity to get an education. Exactly. So I said, uh, if if you put them in an institution, it costs you way more money than if we keep them at home and you educate them. Right. So that was my big thing. That made sense. That was my big thing. So the, the, the wonderful thing with, with all these politicians back then, they were sincere. Senator Markey was the greatest. Oh, yeah, he was sincere. Yeah, yeah and he helped us a lot. Yeah. And beyond Delillo, he, Frank, mm -hmm. he helped us a lot. 
and uh, uh, my my lawyer, uh, Mike uh, Mike Piazza, he he helped us a lot, and he got us uh, chartered, and he got Pat Piazza. That's his name. Oh, I'm I knew Pat Piazza. Yeah. It wasn't he a wonderful man? Yes, my parents used to use him. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful man! He got us started. He chartered us, and he. Uh, Got us started at uh, St. Charles Seminary. Uh huh. Not, no, at St. Francis Seminary. They got one room. We had one room with six children. We hired uh, uh, six teachers. We hired six paras. We hired a director, an assistant director, and also a speech pathologist. And in then fact, you had to raise funds to pay these people. Every week we'd have a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And I'd cook for 300 people. Oh my God. All of us would chip in and cook. This one would cook something, this one would cook something, and even my neighbor would cook. That's nice. Yes. And, and uh, everybody pulled together. Yes. For this. And every week we would cook, and, and the hall uh, at St. Adalbert's we would have it that was given to us. And the band was donated <coughs> to us, and it was so like... So you'd have like a little dance with a buffet. Yes. And raise money. And yes. people would come Every and they would pay to week. attend. And all our friends, we'd have two, three hundred people. Mm. And uh, they would come every Everybody week. Everybody probably looked forward to it as a party yes, every yes. week. Yes, yes. And uh, it, it was very successful. And we'd make the money, we'd hand it to the payroll. <laughs> oh, sure. That's what it was and, all about. And then uh, I even mortgaged my house. Wow. Yeah, but uh, that that was neither here or there. That it was well worth it. Anyway, you did what you had to yeah, do. Yeah, you did what you had to do, and now Eden Chu is uh, so successful. It has two hundred forty children. It's building their own school in Day Street and combining all the st four schools on Staten Island into one. And there's a few schools in uh, Long Island, this I hear. This is going on now? Yes, on now. So in other words, any parent who has a special child can look into... Yeah, lists. There's a list. There's a list of waiting? Yes, really? yes, yes. Because you have to remember, it's a school for autistic children, and the ratio for autism is a one-to-one -one ratio. That's why I insisted on opening a school. Are you saying that half the children are autistic? One to one, you oh, another one, one to one with the teachers. Yes, oh, a I one see. to one with the teachers. Right. So that they could that's learn. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's probably because expensive they need, too. <laughs> that's that's what yeah, that's what it is. Very expensive, but uh, that's why I wanted a school for autistic children. Oh sure. Because Johnny was denied for ten years before, wow. and he deserved that one to one. Sure he did. And uh, he blossomed and bloomed, and and the man he is today is it's amazing. Uh, today he is what age? He is 52 years old today. And, and this is him and this on is him today. Yes. This is him on How the cover. he looks today. Yes. He's a, he's a, he's a beautiful, beautiful person. He's a caring <coughs> person. He's a compassionate person. And he thinks about, he thinks about people's <coughs> feelings. Yeah. And uh, if he sees you sad, he'll come over and say, what are, you, what are you sad about? So he's sensitive to that. Oh, huh? very, superly. And in fact, Johnny goes to the nursing homes, and they can't wait to see him, the old people, because he cheers them up, <laughs> and he brings them flowers, and he... And he, he Sounds like he's got a beautiful personality. Oh, he, he does, he does. There, there is an, And he's got an extra sense of people's feelings like I don't have that 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 sense that he has like like he'll pick out so, somebody in in a room who's not so happy and he'll go right over and talk to them and cheer them up yes and he does cheer people up I always say when three o'clock comes and he gets out of work and he's getting into my home at 3 30 and that door opens and that big smile on his face that you see on the cover, mm -hmm. he's the sunshine of my day. He brings uh, the sunshine in the house. Right. Yep. And I remember when my girls were little, they uh, we had they lived right adjacent to me in the back in the back. We have one one solid backyard, 
and we have a, a built-in swimming pool. And I remember them always coming over with their friends, and they used to say, you got to meet my Uncle Johnny. He's a man with a little boy in him. Oh, and yeah. he is the best uncle anybody could have. Wait till you meet him. And he hang around with them. <laughs> and they loved him. They oh, loved him for yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those girls always come over now and say, how's Uncle John? And, and they grew up with him. And therefore, they're educated with children like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we have to do. We have to educate the people. And that's why I wrote the book also. But mainly for people, parents who have children like this, and they give up. Well, now you, you have the school, but there's a waiting list. Is there any way to expand the school to let more children in? Well, that's what they did. They, they, built, a, they built a brand new school on Bay Street. and uh, they, So you are expanding? Oh, yeah, definitely. So how would anyone with a special child like this contact you? Oh, well, they would have, not me. Johnny's not They'll in that program the anymore. Okay. They would contact the school and ask them. And, and, and what Joanne Garrinsa is, the, is the director of Eden. So it's called Eden 2? Yes. Are they in the phone book? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, they are. And, uh, and I'm proud of that in my life, that I'm proud that these parents and I did this. And uh, my son had a horrific accident. And, and this is why he's amazing to me. I know, that was, that was terrible because he, he got on the lawnmower, right? Yeah, the priest asked him, the father, the brother, they asked him, uh, he was walking around St. Charles Seminary because then we moved from St. Francis to St. Charles because we had more children. And he was walking around with the class and uh, brother, this brother uh, always liked John. And, and he offered him a ride on the mower. Yes. And he got caught in the blade. Yeah, he never shut the the, the motor of the tractor, but uh, he, he shut the tractor off, but never the blade. Didn't realize the blade was still right. going. Right, and when Johnny put his leg over the blade, it took his pants and chewed up the back of his leg. Right. And uh, that was a horrific thing. Uh, I remember getting that call, and I knew from the sound of the director's voice that something, something had, had, happened. had happened. And it was like, everything was like in slow motion. He was at the hospital, and at doctor's hospital at the time. And we drove, I, I remember, thank God my husband was home, opening the back door and calling John. And he looked at me and he said, what happened? I said, Johnny boy had an accident. He said, how? I said, with the tractor lawnmower. He said, oh, my. I, I just couldn't move because the director didn't tell me what I thought yeah. of his arms. Very he, luck, lucky that he didn't lose any limbs. Yes, yes. Anyway, we got to the hospital, and I remember the doctor saying, don't, here's the parents, cover that leg. Yeah. So. And your husband fainted. Yes. My husband lifted up, and he fainted. They thought he had a heart attack. Anyway, Johnny was crying. You couldn't tell his lips from his skin. They were white. He was, he was pure white. Pain. And he was screaming that his leg was on fire. Mm. And I said, why is he saying his leg is on fire? He said, doctor says, you know what it is? When you have such a severe cut or injury, your nerve endings are damaged. And the nerve endings are the ones that actually you feel like you're for his leg is over a fire. Right. And I said, give him something. He said, no, we're waiting for the Couldn't give him anything because of the operation? No, you no, no operation. they couldn't. So he was an hour in. And we prayed together. Johnny's a terrific. He believes in God. He, he's, just a, I, he's just a good person. I feel that God sent him to me. For a reason. For a, this reason. Because you had to do, had be a pioneer yes. for this cause. Yes, definitely. And that's why you were chosen by God. Yes, I feel that. And uh, he, he showed me the way. Mm -hmm. During the cause of Johnny's recovery in, with his leg, it was, uh, he lost all muscle tendons and ligaments. 
and uh, gangrene set in. They were going to cut the leg off, mm -hmm. and then they didn't. And I had to care for it home because he didn't want to go back into the hospital. Right. And the doctor taught me how to care for that right, leg, and right. it was. And I'd bring him to the doctors every day, and it was. But it was worth it because he educated me through that. He 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 deserved the Purple Heart for that. I'll bet. <laughs> now, despite this terrible injury, he went on to win a lot of gold medals in the Special Olympics. Yeah, he told me that when he started walking, he did walk with a limp, and then he found out uh, if he could walk with one foot in front of the other on a straight line like he would he saw not the other limp. boy doing yes, it. Yes, in a playground. He wanted to walk like that boy, walking that white line. And as he did, he said, I'm going to do that. And he did, and he did not limp. So he did throw that old walk away and put in this new walk. And the doctor, w doctor who uh, operated on him could not believe it. He would take the, the x-rays into NYU and put them on a board and show the residents how this boy has no tendons, ligaments, or muscle, and then call John in, and they could not believe it. Yeah. And 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 he because he he, he never says he can't do anything. Where there's a will, there's a way. There is, there is, and more people should be that way. And he went on to be very proficient at figure skating. Yes, he did. And won medals in the Special Olympics, went up to Canada, everything. Yes, and he brought home the bronze medal. And he went, first thing he did was run every race on Staten Island for eight years. Because mm -hmm. he felt that the moving that leg was very good for him. It, it felt better. Because then the blood would flow, because the blood don't flow in that leg. Not much of it. Uh, of course, his, his veins were also a, a lot gone. Yeah, I remember the in the book we talked about he thought there were worms coming out of his leg. Yeah. But it was his veins. Yes, and uh, yes. That was, must have been a fright. Oh, God. Uh, God carried me through this whole thing. Obviously, uh, yes. He, he carried me, mm -hmm. definitely, me and him. And he would say, I'd have to, I'd have to take a big... Q-tip, and I'd have to know the good tissue from the bad tissue. So you were and getting an education, yes. too. Yes, <laughs> and I would have to put this medicine on in that in that leg inside. It was like a bionic leg. You've seen the bone, how the meat was growing. Oh, my God. It had to heal from in to out, and it was like from the back of his knee to the, his ankle. It was in a little hole. And uh, and and he would tell me, Ma, don't worry, you're not hurting me. Just do what you have to do. You're making my leg better. Yeah, well, he knew that. Yeah, and he deserved the Purple Heart for that. Sure. Well, anyway, uh, he now he doesn't walk with with well at night. He'll have a slight limp. You'll well, because he's it. on his feet all day. All day, he gets tired. But uh, he's he's. Uh, shows people that you can't say no, and then he's so spiritual. He goes to ch he gets us to go to church every Sunday. Oh, he's he lives friendly. with you now. Yes, he does oh. because he's an asset to us. I'm sure he helps us with everything. I'm my husband sure. and I, and I often talk to him. Would you like to go in a group home, John? I said, What are you kidding? <laughs> he says. You guys love me too much. That's right. He knows I, it. Yeah. That's good. So I say, and he loves you too yes. much. So I say, yeah, you're right, Johnny. But, you know, Mom and Dad aren't going to be here. He said, well, I have a brother who loves me. And he's right. And, and I'm sure Michael you're going to be says, here for a good long time. Michael says, Ma, don't you even think of it. Uh huh. He's my brother, and he's going to be with me for the he rest of my life. He knows that his brother will take care of him. Yes, sure. yes. And Johnny knows that. And you don't have to worry about no, it. No, no. And my daughter was very good that way. Good. And she tells me that Sounds all the like time. she loves him, too. Oh, she adores him. Good. Her and him have a lot, a lot of uh, special times together. He goes there and he has dinner with them and, you know, he just walks out. I'm eating over. 
right. gave you some rice. <laughs> hey, they're right behind you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and the girls, like I have my uh, granddaughter, Caitlin, coming home uh, from college Friday. And he calls her and she calls him all the time. That's nice. And, uh, and uh, she can't wait to see Uncle John. That's the first thing she says. I can't wait to see Uncle John. Wow. So I'm, I, I'm blessed. I have it's beautiful like three you want, absolutely. granddaughters. I have a, a granddaughter, Brianna, who, who's a singer, and she uh, cut CDs, uh, records, uh, CDs uh, for for John, and she she writes her own songs. Nice. And uh, and, uh, and she, what is her age? Her she's twenty. She goes to Purchase. She's in college at Purchase, mm -hmm. and she. Uh, she uh, records her songs, and I hear Johnny playing them in his room. Aww. Yeah, and he sings to them, and he memorizes Aww. all of them. Aww. And and she and yeah, he uh, that special with Brianna, and then Lauren, she she teaches him how to dance because <laughs> uh -huh. she's a dancer and uh -huh. she's a singer also. But each one of them have something special with them. And yeah, they all have their own special yeah, relationship. Yeah, yes, huh? That's yes, nice. yes. That's really nice. Yes, and um, my father was very instrumental in in yeah, my I life. Yeah, I see on the back. There's a quote from your father yes. about <clears throat> about when he was injured. I think yes. right, and he said, "Out of every tragedy, something good will come of it," yes. and it did. And it did. And it did. And that's what I live by today. Mm -hmm. Out of every tragedy, something always got good comes by. Well, out of every bed, something good comes out. Oh, of definitely, absolutely, definitely. You good. have to, you have to look at the good of it, not the negative of it. That's true. You have to you be gotta positive. Got to find something good in everything. Yes, and it was funny when I was writing this book. Um, my brother is a, a famous artist, and uh, and he, his name is Gregory Carrillo, Carrillo right. and he's world renowned. He's an artist and a sculptor, and. Uh, he encouraged me because... Uh, and he did the cover of the book. Yes, and, and that cover of the book came about by him uh, when he was 17. He was in the Navy years ago, and in 1944, he was very homesick. He wanted to um, be home rather than on a ship. Well, I imagine most of the service people would yeah, rather be home. He was, he was so young. Yeah, sure. And he was mama's boy. Ah. So he uh, he was drawing, he drew a picture of pen and ink of, a, of, a, of, a, of as you see. Blessed a, Mother and the Yeah, it's, it Jesus. resembles the Blessed Mother. Yes. And it has angels all around. And what he did with that, he put it in a folder. And when, when I was writing this book, he calls me up and he said, Lucy, I just found something that's magnificent for your book, but it's your call if you don't want to put it on the cover. So I went down and I seen it and I said, oh, yeah, this is the cover. It's a beautiful cover. Thank it you. It is, like, as you. everybody can see from yes, behind us. Yes, it. yes, yes. And he did that, and uh, I'm proud that he did that. And he always called Johnny My Angel Without Wings, and that's why. That's why he called the book My Angel Without Wings. Yes. Well, it seems to me as though Johnny coming into your life, he was an angel. He was. And, and he taught you a lot that you probably would not have learned if not for his existence. Definitely. And I really, re I, I want to meet him. I would love you to meet him. I would love he's to meet him. He's such a gentleman it and a scholar. It sounds like that he's such a, I would really love to meet him. You will. Sometime. You will. We'll arrange it. Yes. And uh, John is, uh, right now, <laughs> my neighbors with, uh, came with me today, and her name is Rose and Rose Marie. And uh, she she lived with alongside of me for 40 years. Four years. Well, you're really close. You're like sisters. Not really. We just became very. This is oh, the really? funny part. She has five children, but every summer she would go up to uh, upstate, and her, her uncle had a place up there, and uh, all the uh, had a, a beautiful uh, a restaurant there, and and they had uh, motels, and it was like um, like uh, Pine Oaks or something like that. And uh, she would go up, and she would work there, and her children would go up. And so I'd never see her. 
uh, in the summer. So when Johnny was so hyper, I didn't see anybody because nobody wanted to see me. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't contain him and be social. Here comes that woman <laughs> with her hyper kitty again. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so anyway, I, I became friendly with her about 15 years ago, really close. Oh, okay, well, now you're like sisters Yes, then. now we are. And she's in the book. I remember that her, her husband, oh, what a great guy he was. He, he worked in a band, and he had a toupee. And I never s knew he had a toupee because he would wear a baseball hat and all it, the time. And it might have been good toupee, too, because some yes. of them are bad, some of them yes, are good. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, I remember he, Johnny in the bathroom. He was in the bathroom off of the kitchen, and the door was open. And I hear him. Nice hair. Pretty hair. <laughs> Pretty hair. And I'm saying... He must be combing his hair. <laughs> and then I heard, I went outside for a minute and I heard Joe, Rosemary's husband, say, Rosemary, did you see my toupee? <laughs> and then it, it hit me. <laughs> and I went in and Johnny had it on. <laughs> and I had to bring it back and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I said, Joe, here's your toupee. He said, oh my God. I said, Johnny boy, went in your house. And he took it. Uh -huh. But he did that. He would go into people's houses when I wasn't looking. And help himself. <laughs> yeah, and help himself. And then I remember they had a christening, and uh, her little boy Joseph was born. And uh, they had a christening in the backyard, and there was this fence. And I had my picnic table near the fence. And I was wa walked outside, and there's Johnny standing on the table, I heard yelling and screaming, and he's hosing down the food, the cake, everything, and the people are running. It's raining, it's raining. It was Johnny with the hose, <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I wonder what gave him the idea to hose him. I don't know, but he did. <laughs> oh, no. And, yeah, but now he's not like that. No, of course not. <laughs> he outgrew all that stuff. He did, but still he has his tender moments, like, He'll bring home a beautiful bouquet to, to Rose, I remember. And he said, this, this bouquet of flowers is for Rose. I said, oh, how pretty, Johnny. So he went over and he handed her the bouquet. And she said, Johnny, where did you get these? These are beautiful. He said, hand me the funeral parlor. <laughs> right. He, said, he don't know to say. Well, they have all those leftover flowers. Yes, yeah, so he makes bouquets and he delivers meals and wheels. And he puts a little bouquet on the tray. How cute. Yeah. How thoughtful. Yeah. So the, that's part of his... his, uh, his Personality. His, yeah, and that's part of his program. They all make the little bouquets. And, ah. And yeah, and, and that's beautiful. That's it beautiful. It sure is. Yeah. And uh, now uh, we have a dog, and John Johnny adores the dog. And... Uh, what kind of dog you got? We have a Shih Tzu. Oh, how cute. Yeah, we have a Shih Tzu. And uh, Johnny's life is, is a bowl of cherries right now because he, he is the man that every man should be as far as honesty. Integrity. Yeah. And he doesn't lie. He does not lie. Oh, that's good. And <laughs> he, he, do, he don't know how to lie. I, if something happens, he says what happens. I right. know... I know everything that you goes know, anything on. that he says everything, you know is the every, God's honest I know, truth. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And uh, and he he don't curse. Oh my God. Right, he gets a if he hears somebody yeah, cursing. I curse. Oh no. And you know what he says? God forgive her. Oh no. And he looks up at the he said, Mine, you're not supposed to do that. Like we had Father Sandy, Monsignor Sandy over this Thursday. At my daughter laws, I know my we know Monsignor like for twenty five years. Well, did he? But did he ever belong to Mount Carmel? Yes, he there did. There was a Father Sandy when I was yes, a kid. Yes, and then yes, he yes, did. Yes, I remember. That's how my daughter in law and my mo daughter's mother met him. Uh huh. And what? And he went into the uh, uh, the Air Force. Uh huh. And he. I he, think I remember. I think he left Mount Carmel to go to the Air Force. Yes, to send his his. Uh, sisters to college that's wow, what he did nice. and he was a chaplain in the air force uh -huh. for 20 years wow then he came out of there and he came to holy family and that's how i met him and uh, that's how uh that's how uh he became to be 
our friend, our very good friend. But uh, he w was with us on on Saturday, on Thursday, and Johnny. He he made Johnny say the grace at the table, and and he adores Johnny. See, Johnny touches everybody's I'm life. I'm sure. Yes, he's already touched my life, and I haven't met him yet. Yes, he's a wonderful, wonderful boy, and his future is is so. I, I believe some, something big is going to happen with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, a lot of big things have already happened. Like I said, with those the, the uh, Special Olympics and, and and everything, and he's come through an awful lot of oh, yes. suffering and everything to where he is today. And he could be very bitter about it, but he's not. No, he's not. And he always says, "God will help me." God, he's a very that faith is wonderful. And and he says his prayers in Latin, in yeah. Italian. Wow. And uh, my mother taught him that. Yes. Yes. My mother, my mom and dad were, uh, they were immigrants from Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father loved America. And my mother did too. That's and, wonderful. And he, my father went on to go to night school to learn American history. And he was a great storyteller and a brilliant man. And it, it was when he, he moved to Florida when Johnny was like, 10 years old and then he'd come up every summer with my mother and they'd stay with us and uh, when my father would come I'd have lunch my mother would go to my brothers for lunch and my father would stay with me for lunch and that was my highlight of my day he made me the person I am today he made my father made me not not think negative about anything like well that's why you took the bull by the horns yes, as a child yes, and did what you had to do. Yes, and, and that's why he is where he is today. And he used to tell me, there's a reason you have Johnny. Yeah, of course. And I didn't realize. I, I said, but why me? Every friend of mine has a perfectly normal child, but not anymore. This is getting to why be. Why you? Because you had a job. You were chosen. You were the special person that God wanted right. to bring this out. Yes, yes. And I feel so proud that I was the pioneer of a lot. You were. I was. You were. You pioneered the school that a lot of children in in Johnny's uh, position would not be getting help today if not definitely, for you. Definitely. Definitely. I'm sure. Definitely. And uh, that's the story of Johnny. There's so many nice things in the book about him, and there's so many sad things in the book about him. But he overcame a lot of adversity and he became the man he is today. And if anybody should meet, he's very friendly. Like mm -hmm. in, I think about two weeks ago, we were in the um, stop and shop, and uh, there was a man, an older man, in online. And I was online, and then the older man pushed me aside and got in front of me, and really? Johnny's he's like with me. Jumped in front yeah. of you and pushed you. No, he just nudged me, and he went in front of me, and I went, "Whoa, whoa!" So my son went, "Shh, it's me." It's just you? Yeah. And I said, "Excuse me," and he went, "Ma." Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I said, "You just jumped the line." And you went in front of me, and without even saying, can I go in front of you? Mm -hmm. So m I said it harshly. So Johnny said, my mother doesn't mean it. <laughs> he said, you go right ahead, sir. Oh, no. He said, my mother doesn't mean the way she said it. She's not really a nasty lady. Because <laughs> I did say it nasty. Uh -huh. And I looked at him, and he went, See, he's older than you, Ma. I said, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. But like, I can't, I can't say what I want to say when I'm with him to people. That <laughs> like, when I drive, oh, I have to keep quiet. Yeah, somebody cuts, cut you off or something. I have to keep quiet. Keep it to yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he's funny that way. See, he sticks up for the underdog. Mm -hmm. So, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And.
I mean, it seems like he's a, a really good person, good-hearted person, and a person that does understand a lot. Yes, he does. He so does. Um, he's come a long way. Oh, he has. He has. He has. He's come a long way. And uh, that's why parents today, they do give up, you know. And they have right in front of them every program that they need to have. But the, the, the key to this is to have early intervention. Oh, sure. The earlier you start, the, the more better off the child is. That's right. And, the, and early intervention, you carry that to the home. What's done in the school should be done at home. And oh, sure. Too. That's what we had to do. Yeah. That, like we, when we opened Eden 2, the way they uh, taught the children there and rewarded them, we did behavior modification. And that's, that's what they do, behavior modification. I believe they still do it. I'm not sure. Tell me now, you said that, okay, Eden 2 is in the phone book, and if anyone has a special needs child, right. they can call and try to and see about getting yes, involved. Yes, yes. And now also, if somebody wants to read your book. Even Lifestyles has this as a day app. Li lifestyles. And so does On Your Mark. Okay, so and they're and all, all very fruitful are in programs. The phone book. Yes. Uh, on Your Mark, Lifestyles, and Eden 2 yes. are three possibilities for people with special needs. Right, children. and there's uh, there's there's so many. There's one on Newdorf Lane. I believe it's a very special place. Uh huh. And that's also a program for these are all adult programs. Oh, okay. So. If uh, the child is fading out to being become an 18 and, and they go into an adult program, and that program, the adult program, when we opened Eden 2, naturally there wasn't an adult program either. Right. So when John reached the age of 18, we had to fight for an adult program too. So now this all evolved then. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So tell us where can people purchase your book if they would like to. They can go to Amazon.com. They could TatePublishing.com. Tate, T-A-T-E, Publishing.com. And they could go to BarnesandNoble.com. Um, Barnes and, and there's a few, Kindle, it goes on the Kindle. Uh-huh. So, I mean, there's a few uh, sites that it is on. I think there's 17 of them. 17 sites, sites that, that they're on. That they I, I don't know them offhand. Right, but, well, Amazon is was most popular, and this Tate Publishing and <clears throat> Barnes, and, Barnes Noble. and Noble. And right. Barnes and Noble, in, not only dot .com, but in the store as well. No, not in the store not yet. Store, but Barnes and Noble on, on and in the store. Right. I see. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, and no, not in the store. On, 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 online. BarnesandNoble.com. Okay. Right. And uh, I, I want to stress the fact that people still have to be educated with these children. Because oh, a parent can't just take the child, dump them in a school, and forget about it. They have to be involved. Yes, but I mean the 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 parents have to be involved, definitely. But I feel that the community more so needs to needs to understand these children, oh, sure. and and uh, they have to be very educated with the, with these type of children. Uh, so maybe you could so start a program where the community yeah, gets educated, uh, maybe a little newsletter They or still something. don't understand, and so they're afraid of it. They're afraid because they, when, when people are unaware and ignorant about a subject, there's fear. Yeah, they don't understand. Right. Just like death. We don't understand death. We're afraid of it. Well, until you do understand yeah. it. You know, like someone like me. You understand stuff, it. I understand yeah. it, and I'm not afraid of it. I'm not ready by any means. But when the time comes, I think I will go happily. Yes, well, know? yes, yes. But? Yes, but uh, what mm. I'm trying to say, what people don't understand, they're fearful of. Lots of people. That's it. Well, ignorance me, uh, it, and fear kind of go hand in hand. Definitely. You know? But in the meantime, I would like to say thank you because this has been so interesting. Thank you. And uh, you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank and you. Th this whole uh, story about uh, your my angel without wings. Yes. And apparently this man is an angel without wings because he's such a, a good person. He's yes. got a heart of thank gold. Thank you. Thank you. You know, he's so good that um, he is an angel without wings. Hey, you know what? 
He's got wings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. I'm sure he has wings, and and I'm sure and and God brought him here and for that you reason. Put you together because you both had a job together to to may bring this all about and make it happen so that others would benefit. Yes, definitely. So thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you because I'm sure and I'm hoping that people will benefit by it. Thank you so much. So take thank care, Thank you for everyone. having me, Christine. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. You're a special lady. Thank you. So everybody take care and good night. <laughs>